So now we have queued up for you. We've got them all ready in the green room. We've got a very exciting live panel. Uh, we've got, who we got, Craig? Who we have guests? Alex Mordew from Team Firestorm. We have Cy Harrison from King B. We have Sir M. Belendron from Oblivion and Supernova. And we have Mike Lambert from Dan Tomkier. Let's jump in with them now. Oh, there we go, video and audio. Hey! Hey, we're back in. Technical issues as expected. Hello, guys. How are we all doing? Technical issues as oh. expected. Hello. So, uh, Hello, thank you so much for joining us this very, not too early morning now. It's 11 o'clock here. Not, not for the case for all of us. I think, Mike, you're on a different time zone. Yeah. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Not too early morning now. It's 11 o'clock here. Um, okay, so we're going to have a little panel with you guys. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, first of all, we were hoping we could just go around the, uh, the room and get yourself uh, each to introduce yourselves. Uh, what was your first robot and how did you get involved in robot combat? The classic starting question. So we're going to start with Alex on my, on my left here. So Alex. Uh, well, like a lot of other people uh, in the in the late 90s we were watching um, Robot Wars on the TV season one and looked at that and went those are crap I could do better than that um, turns out we couldn't but yeah um, built Groundhog for <laughs> season <thing>. yeah <laughs> built Groundhog for season two and it uh, it moved um, it was a thing. which was good didn't didn't need to be pulled on by fishing line um, <laughs> but yeah um, yeah, it, it could have gone better, uh, and yeah, just kind of worked on from there. Um, yeah, took a break out for a while, and then yeah, moved on to uh, smaller and yes. some might say better things. I like Ooh. to hear that. I like to hear that. We'll bring up more about the uh, smaller, better things later. Um, we're going to head over to Sai. Sai, how did you get started? What? How did you come across this sort of thing? Uh well, as as always, you, I saw series one and um, just was blown away. And uh, just got, you know, a friend at work just said, you've got to do this site, it's right up your street. And I'm more of an electronic sort of person, not a bit mechanical, but more cars then. I do, did a lot of work on sort of race cars and stuff. And um, got a little team together and we said, right, we've got loads of time. Obviously not loads of time, we've got months to do this. And um, we thought we'd build a machine out of just scrap and just show them that and then build a real one. But what happened is we built the scrap one and ended up entering that because we ran out of time <laughs> like everyone did and pretty much ended up with the same machine all the way through all these years you know we just de just developed it over the, over the time i've been doing it but um it's been wonderful um so that's how i got going that's how i'm here now um pretty much the same machine i can't say i've got an illustrious batch of other you know great builds that i can show you it's just just the one thing it's king buxton for me and that's how i'm staying i think and it's a glorious thing absolutely and also we want to give a, of course a big shout out as you are the uh, the godfather of robo nerd so thank you for enabling all this fantastic gathering of people um well, thank uh, thanks in. guys um, thanks guys for running it i mean like you know me i i just threw things out there i just sort of threw a direction out and it seemed it was popular so i'm really happy that people have picked up the thread of it and um, really run with the the idea robo nerd and um you know thanks thanks to the you chats for getting it on air really because um, we had nowhere else to go you know it's ra probably raining to go today where <laughs> we're going to be anyway so yeah, it's probably a horrible day so a bit of a relief disgusting. in one respect yeah so um but here we are you know yeah. we got on somehow we did it Excellent. It. So, what about you, Sarin? How did you get going in this sort of strange hobby? Um, so, uh, similar to Simon, I watched series one. I saw Mortis, uh, and and I thought, yeah, I, I've got to, I, I've got to get involved with that. Um, and I found out that Rob Knight actually went to my uh, secondary school as well. So, oh, I was right. speaking to some of the teachers, um, so and um, I, and so that really got me into it. Um, so, I, I was around sixteen. And pretty much when all the other kids were out playing football, I was in the workshop at lunchtime um, making Oblivion, which was my first robot, uh, which was a wooden uh, wooden robot. So Cy probably doesn't remember this, but uh, I went to the audition uh, and, and I saw King Buxton then and RoboDoc. Um, and I just, you know, saw all of these amazing robots. And I thought, yeah, from then on, I've kind of been obsessed with it. Um, so obviously I built Oblivion first, which was the wedge-shaped robot. Um, that transformed into a more boxy uh, axe robot, uh, and then Supernova, which I'm better known for. I was a big fan of Oblivion 2 back in the day. I loved the, the blue colouring. It's awesome. All right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Always had a good colour scheme in your team, for sure. And uh, what about you, Mike? How did you get going in this strange hobby? I saw Series 1, Series 2, thought I could do better. Um, just an engineer that I, I like playing with metal things and 
playing around. It's, it's just something that was good for me. Fair. Excellent. And what was your first robot called then? Pardon? What was your, what was your first uh, outing into robots? What was your first build? My first build was Dan Tomkey um, with that weapon, the very first one. And we went oh. to uh, Wilson's Day at school. Do you remember them, Si? Wilson's Day? I do, I think so, yeah. I, you yeah. Were, it was, wasn't painted any colour then, was it? Did you go with no, like a... pure steel machine. Yeah, I don't remember really it. Boxy one. Because now I look back, I'm thinking, oh, you know, with the, with the, you know, the yellow and black accents on it, it really became... But I, I did, obviously, I didn't know much about you, where you come from, you know, and who was this? <laughs> you know, what, what was it? You know, yeah. but it, later on, later on, I regretted my neglect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I went to those events as well, Wilson's. Uh, yeah. But our very, very first fight was also Tornado's very first fight, and it was oh. together. Oh, nice. So oh. they turned up with this brand new robot, I turned up with this brand new robot, and they shoved us in the arena, and well, the rest is history. They never yeah. won fight against me. <laughs> Uh, Stu Barnwell's just sent me a message, right, just on the phone. He says, S I think he's talking to you, Mike. He says, say I miss my sloppy kisses. <laughs> Do you know anything about that? <laughs> That's an exclusive sloppy right here. Kisses. There we go. <laughs> it's, just, it's just come up on here, you know. So, yes. what, what, How you know? strange. How strange. <laughs> well, I, 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 I like Stu. Um, I like him a lot, you know, like a kid. Um, so every time I just see him, you know, you lick his face like a dog used to lick his thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it's very strange. And, yeah. uh, so we're going to jump in with uh, our next question for you guys. This uh, question came from a, a good friend, Charlie Hubbard, on Facebook, who posed the question to all of you. It's Series 7. You're all put in a four-way rumble. Who comes out alive? Can I answer that? <laughs> you I'm coming out alive. Because I'm going down the pit first to get away <laughs> from all this lot. Whoa, you're going out. Excellent. So, Sai's going in the pit. Sorin, what's going to happen to your bot in Series 7 and against these guys? Uh, I, I'm sure we'll lose a couple of blades and, <laughs> uh, and it'll probably self destruct like it normally does. Excellent. <laughs> Alex? Uh, I, I think I'm probably following uh, King V down the pit as well, <laughs> uh, just going straight in. Like, you know, attempt, attempt to push it in and just, yeah, end up... Follow in yourself. Excellent. Following in, yeah. Okay. And Mike, well, what's up with I've never had to use the pit because the walls are very low. So they go <laughs> Um, so, say, so from the sound so of it, it Mike. sounds like you've won it, Mike. Yeah, it sounds Mike's like won it, yeah. Out, yeah. Weapon, yeah. Weaponless uh, well, spinning yeah, over, yeah, I mean, chucking out at the end there. <laughs> I, I don't like spinners, never have done. Um, so I would take on Supernova first and hopefully smash them in the wall and break them. But if someone's learned this lesson from all the years, that would fail because it wouldn't break. <laughs> and I would destroy myself. <laughs> so I have a question for you guys here that I think is a really interesting one that as builders we get quite passionate about. Uh, is what What is your favourite weapon now? Because I think Alex is an interesting one because he was obviously quite into his front hinge flippers or whatever and, and he's now moved to more uh, destructive, shall we say, weapons. And obviously... Uh, some of you guys have varied up your different weapons choices over the years. Uh, where do you stand now on your favourite weapon? We'll start with Alex. Uh, so it, it changes. It, it, it's not really so much about favourite weapon. It's more about what I enjoy building. Um, just like, OK, I fancy building like a, a little little hub motor on the end of an arm. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that was fun. It's fun to build. <laughs> and it's like it, it kind of worked. Um, but yeah, um, I do. I I still do love a good front hinge flipper. Really? Um, I would think yeah. considering building a new one at some point. Uh, maybe, maybe a, a small, a small scale again. Small scale, uh, like yeah. That. How about you, Mike? You were saying you don't like spinners. Are you still a flipper no. at heart? Yeah, definitely. Um, I I don't like destroying other people's hard work. I, I really don't. I know how much money this is because I want to beat them. And oh, yes, I'll do everything I can to beat them. One of the reasons I like flippers is because the amount of engineering involved and the, all the different technologies. You've got high pressure gas, you've got the valves, you've got the control system, you've got the fail safes to make it all safe. There's so many different things you have to put into such a small machine. It, it's quite a lot. I, mean, I don't want to knock Sai or someone when they make their electric motors for their, their spinny bits. But other than taking their own shock, because when they hit something, they've got to take absorb the impact as well. 
it, it's quite a bit easier to make those than it is to make a, a, a flip up. Interesting. In Would you agree with that, Sirin? Would you say it's no. easier? <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, it, just from the, all the bits that have fallen off on Supernova, <laughs> like, uh, it, I, I, don't, I don't think it's uh, that easy at, at all. Why point exactly? He didn't make it strong enough to absorb so <laughs> But you, yeah. would you say you're a spinner man at heart still, Sirin? Um, so uh, I think I'm similar to Mike in that I, I don't like, you know, I, I did for the engineering challenge uh, and not so much trashing other people's uh, robots. And, and so, you know, I, I think having had Supernova for so long, I kind of know all the weaknesses of spinners. Uh, and and I, I think right now I, I'd rather do something slightly different, like uh, a growler type robot. Um, oh. You know, something with a lot of traction that that can grab. Um, and I was speaking to the Coopers about it, and um, yeah, I, I think Graham was saying something similar. And then uh, then Spectre uh, uh, turned up. Um, but I, I think in the future I'd rather do something different uh, that can actually defeat a spinner than oh, make cool. another spinner. So you're, you're thinking about trying uh, trying out some new some new weapon types. So, something something different, you know, more track, more power, you know, using brushless motors, um, mm. and yeah, I, I really liked uh, Growler as a robot, um, and, and you know, to be a spinner, all you need is a, is, is a good wedge, really. <laughs> um, I, I, as we saw, uh, you know, Storm mm. did well. All all they had was a titanium wedge on the front of it, um, and so really, that, that's all you need. I, I think um, spinners. You know, you, you get good spectacle from it because of all the energy and things start flying all over the place. But actually, I don't think it's that hard to beat them. Ah, okay. Dare I say the word battle bots to you? Yeah. Sarah. Have you uh, have you seen have you seen battle bots? Because uh, yeah, it's no, quite no, difficult no, to have, beat the spinners have, on that then, show. <laughs> but then you know, if you saw, I think Witch Doctor against Tombstone, you know, they, they just had a solid wedge on the front of it. That's true. And and and, and you know, even even Tombstone conked out after a while because you just can't take the impact. Uh, it's the same issue I had with Supernova. Yeah. But you know, when I built Supernova first time round, um, the tech was a lot. You know, it was a lot more complicated. To, well, the tech wasn't there and really it was me with a jigsaw cutting bits of aluminum in a, in a shed you know nowadays you can get things laser cut and you know you can build it to the next level uh in terms of engineering wise mm. but then you know it was a lot harder and i had all i had all sorts of problems uh with supernova trying to just keeping it running to, uh... it's a difficult challenge isn't it just taking all those you know, all those forces yeah. and and so what about you with the you obviously have the the slightly less typical weapon with the forks and um, is that yeah. still where you, where you are these days if you're just designing well, new it, well, yeah, I mean, the reason I've gone for the spikes is I've often thought that I've had a lot of time. The last year, I've really sort of down tools. I haven't felt good. It's another story. But I've had a lot of time to think. And I was thinking, oh, why don't I just make a spinner? Because it's just so easy. I mean, it looks so easy. I know, just don't get, don't get to it. It's not that easy. But, you know, I've built feedback systems on the spikes. I've tried to make King B with this spike system and the mobility the most accurate, most mobile platform I could possibly make. And it's really hard. But I do like that challenge in that there's a lot of technical aspects. I mean, I've just made a new gearbox for the lifter, and it probably weighs more than a, you know, a spinner motor would, but it's just full of gears and reductions and you know, clutches because there's such a lot to go wrong. Whereas, and I spent a lot of time thinking, I just want to build a spinner. I really do want to build a spinner because mm -hmm. my ultimate, I've got two ultimate, I've two favorite bots in all the world. I mean, Warhead and uh, also the Master back from, you know, 95 or whatever, 96, and, you know, original American robots. But coming back to like, you know warhead there's something about the jeopardy of you know a big horizontal spinner you know that energy um transferring between two bodies i mean if if the two parties in the fight are in the game for a bit of destruction okay it's, it's it's not always so much fun to get everything destroyed but everyone's up for that you don't know what's going to happen when they touch you know the angle the amount of energy that's going to be transferred and there's something i find quite exciting about a horizontal spinner over a vertical spinner where you pretty much know he's going to hit somewhere and something's going to bend or flip over but the, the just the jeopardy of it so i have in my i have got a plan i have got a design and i've had for about three years and there's a big motor here for it actually for um for for a you know horizontal spinner but i just keep coming back to buxton i just can't help myself i just keep coming back to buxton i just love just developing i want spikes to be something one day yes i i believe in you and i, I we keep trying to steal your lifting mech for our, our flamingo robot and we, we've not made it work so i think we have a lot of uh, respect for anyone who can make a robot that can lift another i think it's actually a very absolutely 
mechanical challenge. Uh, you mentioned sort of horizontals versus verticals. I've seen uh, Alex Moji has been doing some very strange robots recently, something that I think combines both. Is that right, Alex? And of course, that uh, is a beetle. So do you want to ask a question, Craig? Yeah, I, I wanted to kind of bring it round to some of the smaller weight classes, because I know some of you have taken part in some regards. I know, Mike, you made the, the featherweight Dan Tom Kier. Um Alex. Well, you guys blow job. Right. I hit that. Sorry, blow fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it existed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the old free radio handle. Sorry. <laughs> and Alex, you've been taking part recently in in uh, the beta weight scene over at Bugglebots, um, doing fairly well, I hear, reportedly. Um, how about the rest of you? Have you ever thought about? Uh, taking it into smaller weight classes. So, Sai, you were saying you were thinking about doing a spinner. Have you thought about doing a lower weight class spinner, perhaps? Uh, I don't know. I think so many other people have done them so well. You know, I think there should be a new... There's always a new angle. I have got an idea, actually. I have got both the heavy and the lightweight. So I think it's something that's not done enough. Um, I, can't, I don't want to say, because I'd like to build it and just turn up with it. But it's... I haven't really got... I need, I need help, actually. There's a few things which are technically, you know, I'm a simple guy. I weld stuff. I use tube. You know, I, use ha I just hacksaw it out. Very basic, you know, um, CAD stuff. But I, I like the, uh, I like doing it. I like it being a bit of a craft and an art. So there's some things I've got in my mind for a smaller one, but at the scale, it's going to be very hard to do. So if I could team up with someone who's very good at machining and printing, I could probably do it. I have, it's, I have got so much at the, you know, at the tip of my mind, you know, to do, but it's just, you know, life's so short and there's so little to do, going to work and doing other things. I love this scene, but the time you need to really throw into it, you know, but yeah, I am but it's just, a small just robot, gonna, the time is supposedly smaller, right? That's how yeah, well, well <laughs> people, it seems to be that like, heavyweight builders can build a heavyweight in like four to That's ten true. months. And, you you know, these Beatle builders, you, uh, three years later, still like showing their wares on Facebook. And you go, where is it? You know, <laughs> so, um, you know, actually, that's why one, one of the reasons kind of for doing yeah. RoboNerd to encourage people to, even if you've not finished your thing and don't think it's good enough, I want people to come along, just put it in and try it, you know, because there's so much stuff. You, the problem is, I tell you, there's so much, you see so much good stuff, they're almost scared to run it. And I, I think it's it, it's almost a, it's a bit false in a way because you shouldn't be scared to bring out whatever design you've got. You should just make it yeah. and bring it and take it and just even you know just just do it. You learn a lot. That's that's my philosophy I anyway. Love that motto. You heard that here, guys. If you're thinking of building a robot, if you're in the CAD phase of robot, go and build it. Come on, stop stop yeah. sitting around. I think people have more time at the moment. I hear. So, uh, <laughs> maybe make use of that. How about you, Sarin? Have you checked out the the beetle or feather scene at all? Have you considered any of that? Sort of smaller weight uh, class stuff? Yeah, so I, I used to follow it on the forum, um, the Fighting Robots forum. Um, but I, I don't know, I've always liked uh, heavyweights. Um, and I, you know, one thing comes to mind is go big or go home. Uh, and I, I think I'd rather stick with the, with the heavyweights. I, I, don't, I don't know why the featherweights haven't really uh, appealed to me. Uh, but but as, as, as Sai mentioned, you know, I think an issue I have right now is time as well. Just try, trying to do everything that I've got on right now. So um, I, I think I would stick with heavyweights and, um, you know, I, I definitely apply to the next BattleBots um, season as well. Excellent. That'd be really good. That's really good to hear. We're excited to hear that you're thinking about uh, doing a bit of the American stuff. Yeah, it'd be really good to see you bring out Supernova, all that new design you've kind of been a. Uh, Teasing yeah, yeah we like the sound of that new design. I think that would do quite well over there. So, Mike, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah. How long does it take to build a heavyweight? Dan Tomkin for, Ro for Robot Wars, the first one, took 10 days. That must have been a fun 10 days, mate. <laughs> it, was, yeah, it was a hard 10 days. But yeah, and I wouldn't want to do it again. Hey, the first iteration of Two-Headed Death Flamingo took two days. Yeah, it was just, just a, putting it out a, there. a weekend of box section welding. I Thank believe. you, Rory. Yeah. <laughs> but I was lucky I had very, very good neighbours. So when I angle grind metal, lived in a cul-de-sac, when I cut metal, which is extremely loud, you'd you'd be working away and a foot would come with a pint of beer. So one oh. of my neighbours would come and see what I'm making, give me beer, and then hold the metal while I cut it. I was very lucky. Not everybody is that lucky. Yeah, yeah and he's still, got, he's still not lost a leg then. 
<laughs> yeah, I've always that both those names have gone now. They, they've left this place, unfortunately. Yeah. But I was very lucky. I had good neighbours. Nice. Um, and Alex, you, you, as you've moved the other way, do you miss, do you miss the bigger robots? Do you miss the, uh, the oomph of those things? Or do you have the same motto as me and Craig, which is heavyweights are stupid? Do you miss having to lift a hundred kilos? <laughs> I do, I do miss them. I don't miss lifting them. Or, um, yeah, I, I, I do, I do like them though. Like I went along to the Robot Wars series nine and ten filmings, um, just in the audience, and yeah, just the. Just the feeling you get from it, just when you know, just just hearing, you know, something like Apex spin up, or um, yeah, it was just terrifying. It's just so terrifying, even even terrifying. though you know you're perfectly safe, um, it's still just yeah. Um, it's an unnatural sound, right? It is. <laughs> it, no one should hear this. Yeah, the fear is real. So we have yeah. a really fun question here. Um, we wanted to ask each of you, what's your favourite robot of the other three people? <laughs> So we'll, go, we'll start with Alex. We'll go in reverse this time. So Alex, who's your, what's your favourite robot of these guys? And why? And why? Why? Uh, yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. Here we go. I <laughs> think I think it would prob- probably be King B. Um, we came up against um, <laughs> yeah, we, we came, <laughs> came up against them in um, oh, which one was it? it? Was it was one of the extremes who we were doing like tag team? We were doing like a tag team terror. I was going to mention like this. That. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and, th- and those spikes were like, ah, it's fine. It's just got a couple little spikes on it. Just, but unfortunately, Firestorm at the time was made out of paper, so um, <laughs> it just, like rammed it. Just went straight through it, through the buffer tank, and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> now it doesn't flip anymore. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I really, I'm really, really big fan of just like, you know, maximum power into the drive and. Um, yeah, the little little lifty forks, and yeah, all, all the sort of all the electronics work as well that Sai does is just. Oh, yeah, thank it's you. Really, it's really really cool to see because like you know most people just like buying stuff off the shelf and stick it in, and yeah that that sort of extra extra work that's going into it's just it's really really okay. cool. Did you try to sell stuff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not on sale, on sale soon. 400 amp, 100 volt drivers. There you go. This live stream brought to you by King B Electronics. <laughs> um, over to you, the Mike. BBB store? Oh, yes, over yes. I hear, I hear there's a great robot shop out there. Um, anyway, um, yeah, Mike, what's your favourite robot of the uh, of the other three? King B. And King B. it's oh. not from what Alex said. Reason being, King B. I'll go to Southern first. Southern is one of the only one we were terrified of with, with Supernova. So a lot of respect to Southern for that. But King B, primarily because it's beautifully well made, always well presented, but the team were good. If you ever looked into their robot and asked a question, they'd answer, there was no secrets inside the machine. Okay, it's a frame covered in polycarbonate, hard to hide. But the side would tell you exactly what's inside it, how it works, why he's done it a particular way. So, Sai, thank you very much. Massive. Oh, thank you. I mean, hey. uh, I'm honoured again. Thank you again. Sai Support Club. But, Siren, come on. Have you, you must have a twist on change this. Change it up. Come on. Change it up. No, you can be honest. Don't um, what, I'm going to change it up, but it's, it's maybe a, a wishy-washy answer. But I'd say all three for different reasons. Um, so, uh, I liked... Um, uh, Firestorm for the differential. I thought that was uh, they had a really cool design uh, on the drive, and and I was really impressed with the engineering behind that. Um, I, I liked King, King Buxton because he just felt re- uh, relentless. He kept on, he kept on going, and you know if anything got in the way, he just got pushed. Um, so I, I really liked that part about King Buxton. And uh, in terms of Dantum Kia, I just felt that I, I'm pretty. I, I felt that I was going to get flipped, no, no matter what. And um, and uh, you know, I, I think flippers are Supernova's biggest weakness. Um, it's so easy to flip, uh, and I'm pretty sure I'd, I would have lost to Dan Dan Donkey every time. So, so there, there were my three reasons. Was, I, I liked all the other Thank you for being so diplomatic and nice about all the robots. <laughs> I do agree. The differential drive is so cool. I forget about how bonkers yes. that stuff is. And Sai, over to you. You can't say King B, so let's No, no, I wasn't going to. Well, I tell you what, the reason these guys, you're all here is because I asked you. So obviously, you obviously made an impression. I wanted you to be here because it's it, you're, you are machines that have made an impression on me over the years. So um, it's hard to sort of spit you apart. I mean, Supernova, I mean, early days of that was one of the very few very dangerous spinners. When that came on the scene, I never had to fight it, I don't think. And... and 
you know, I would never want to. And that's the sort of machine you're impressed with. Mike, because, you know, it, it, it's such a... You, you've done so... You, well, you were the fastest out of the arena for a long time, weren't you, or something? But I have to go in the end, I think, I suppose, with Firestorm. And a reason from a technical... My technical brain is... Um, you know, I look at Supernova and it's like it's brute force, it's fantastic. And Mike has great umatics, but I don't understand umatics. But I, I know differentials because I did a lot of work on cars. So, Firestorm, when I first saw that, I, it was just 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 something else. When they opened up the lid and, and you saw like the slip rings and the, and the diffs, and you saw you know the differential drive for the forward and reverse and the steering, and like, and it kind of clicked with me. I don't know if it clicked with anyone, but to me, it was like this is just amazing. And with that, it's been extremely consistent, you know. And, and coming back to what I was going to mention, you're talking about the, uh, the, the the tag team thing, which is I think this trophy this trophy here. I've only got that, and you mentioned fire. I tell you why we got that Firestorm. Is very gracious and i tell you you've been very overplaying that you know you got the damage but you just come out i think you just taped yourself up you came into that fight as uh, you volunteered yourself into that fight after something else where you were all you were just you were just done in you know, i think you won the last fi fight you win but you had nothing left to give but you still came into that fight with you know s with a splint you know and like tape and all sorts of stuff you know and you were so you were, you you know you came into that and and it was I feel sorry to have to like attack you and it, you know, went through, I didn't mean to mean that, that dastardly, but you know, that was really good sportsmanship. You know, that, that fight couldn't have gone down if you dropped out and said, Oh no, we've, you know, we can't run because everyone else has gone home. I think it's the last thing filming. It wouldn't even been on, but the sports sportsmanship, the consistent sportsmanship, the good display. I, I really, I'm, I like a bit of fast on me. I, you know, psh, there you go. Excellent answer. Love Thank it. you. So we have a uh, and it's not common that something as novel as that differential it just kept on working uh, I, I don't remember it, it, it ever, ever stopping so that's something that's really really well engineered and i was impressed yeah. by that yeah it stopped a couple of times but i think that was just um that, yeah. it was a problem further along the chain it was it was in a pre uh, a pre-manufactured part <laughs> but the I differential the itself saying, just, right? yeah. is 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 um something that was amazing back then was just having a really reliable robot is 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 mm -hmm. one yeah. of the hardest cha challenges yeah. so i wanted to ask number one challenge a great number one challenge from gareth ampsy on facebook saying is there anything from back in my day in quotation marks <laughs> which you still wished existed in modern com combat robot stuff can i say simon I can i say first off i got for it mate. BBC being able to draw in six million people on a Friday night. They can't be bothered now. That's from back in the day. Six million people are watching television, wanting to build robots, wanting to do engineering, just being excited. Whole families watching the thing on Friday night, six o'clock, whenever it was. Yeah. That's back in the day. I mean, they've tried and they've just not done what's required. And I think the audience is there. Look at us here. You've got this whole Robiner thing. I wish I could just take this and just shove it to the beeb or someone and just say, look, it's, there's such a desire. What the hell are you doing wrong? It used to be right, and now it's wrong. I'm sorry. That's my feeling. And when you see BattleBots in America is now Discovery's biggest show, you know, and they're they're yeah. they're, they're putting on two hour episodes and thirty episode seasons. It feels like Robot Wars back in when you guys had that yeah. glory days. Yeah. We didn't have the glory days with the reboot here, I don't think. So yeah. I, I'd agree with that. How about you, sir? And what do you what do you miss from back in the day that that, that we don't have with modern robots? Uh, well, m maybe not modern robots, or maybe the modern scene. Uh, it's that uh, I used to really enjoy watching people build robots and update websites. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I I'd always spend my uh, lunch times going to my favorite websites and refreshing them just to see, you know, what, what people have worked on. Um, so I, I really, I really miss that part of the old scene i used to enjoy like learning from what other people are doing and looking at new tech and uh, maybe stealing some ideas so i, I miss that part i want to say yeah we we, we miss that too the the, the the sort of when i first got into this stuff which is a lot later than a lot of you guys like there was still the forums and you could go and see all these great blogs and and, and websites as well whereas it's all just facebook groups and stuff now and and while that's still really nice and there's still a really good community there's not the same like longevity and you can't go back and yeah find I, I, I don't know if people people are being more secretive now is is all a bit hush hush oh, but, really? um, I, I i do i do i do miss the the websites you know i think particularly uh, with heavyweights i've noticed that because the, Be the Beatles scene we know exactly what's in everybody's robots uh, but the heavyweight yeah. scene we have to go over in the pits and have a little peek inside because otherwise you have no you're right there is this sort of 
less sharing going on around the big bots at the yeah. moment. So, a very good answer. What about you, Mike? What do you miss from the old days? The social side and the simplicity of the robots. Um, let that finish. <laughs> Sorry, just, gonna, just enjoy it. Is that your ringtone? That's, a, that's quite an epic one. Uh-huh. Hold on. There's something else I miss while he's answering the phone. Yeah. I miss 80 kilo, I miss 80 kilogram weight limits. Oh, me too. Oh. My bad. I think, you know, <laughs> you could build such vicious stuff now with 80 kilos. I mean, it's um, it could be more, they could be faster, they could be just as powerful. Um, you know, now you, you could just build big blocks into your engineering, you know, with lead acids going out and, mm. and you know, lithium's coming in, should have gone back to 80k, my personal feeling. Yeah. I agree, because yeah. now you've got I mean, less metal batteries. batteries. The last three have been 80 kilo. The first Dan Tomkey, second Dan Tomkey, uh, Spitfire, which I took to the States, and um, Bad Attitude, they're all 80 kilo machines. Um, regarding the simplicity, we did an event in Holland back in the late 90s and Dan, I, I was quite famous because I used to let people strip Dan Tomkey apart find out what's inside it provided they put it back as they found it I didn't care so I had loads of people that used to take especially the Dutch used to take the robot apart Mike what does this bit do what does that bit do and they used to strip the robot apart I had no secrets um, and I'll to, to, to be the best you have to fight the best and if I have to push somebody forwards or help somebody forwards to encourage them to go a certain route or to help them on a certain route, so I whoop, the, whoop them later, I'd be those more than happy to do that. Um, as again, it's one of the reasons why I like Cy. Si, you know, his, his, other than his speed controllers, his machines are quite simple. Sorry, Cy, but they are really nicely made. Um, his spikes at the front, the only things that ever got through the side of Dan Tomkey caused me a, a wheel to go, which one had hard rock sides because of his, his spikes. Shall I turn the story about that if we got time? Yeah, let's go for it. Mike, Mike hadn't spoken to me for like 10 years and I was too scared to speak to him because we, you know, in the first, you know, the, fir the first is a melee. When you, the first, you know, thing you get in Road Wars, you get melees, four of you, two, two go home, two go through. And Mike was in the booth with me, I think, and he said, oh, you know, like, we'll have these two, you know, team up with me. And it's like, I was too scared to say no, I, you know. So we went on and he just drove in front of me and I went in the side of him. I didn't mean to, you know, when he's going at full tilt and like there's a yellow and black sort of like wedgie thing gets in front of you. And I went straight <laughs> through the side of his wheel arch, straight into his wheel. I think we still got through. I can't remember. It was like, what was it? I can't remember. It didn't, it didn't but, cost him a fight. <laughs> he went he went crazy i thought he'd never speak to me he said that's so unsporting i can't believe you that we had an agreement and i he's like i'm really sorry i'm really sorry I, he's like, you were just there and i just the spikes went through and i don't know what i can say i'm sorry and i was so so scared to talk to him until about now really i think oh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, alex how, how do you feel obviously you, you do a lot of regular building now what do you miss from the old school old school uh, so i mean I, I miss shed builds like you look at battle bots and it's like there's a lot of you know there's a lot of really really high you know a lot of machine parts and you know tens of thousands sometimes even hundreds of thousands potentially of like machining and uh, materials and stuff stuff going into them um but yeah there's there's not yeah there's not as many sort of shed builds and i know I, I know that it's kind of it doesn't doesn't make great tv all the time but mm. it just kind of inspires people to look at it and go, yeah, I could do something mm. like that. And that that's why yeah. I also I really like I really like the lower weight classes now, um, just because it's it's so it's so accessible. Um, that's something that you know wasn't around when I was when I was doing Groundhog and the early days of Firestorm. Um, like beetles weren't a thing, and now it's like yeah, um, there's a huge huge scene uh, both in. Uh, UK, US, and rest of the world as well for them. Mm. So yeah, that's that's something yeah. that I wouldn't. I don't. Can I, can I jump in here? Go for yeah, it. Yeah, we we did battle bots back in 2002. The Spitfire that we took, which everybody recognised it as a similar to Dan Tomkey. I don't know how much I think cost. It it, it it was all handmade. It was simple and easy. And we fought. I can't remember who we fought, but it was forty thousand dollar machine that we fought. It, it was a good fight. We won. But our shed built, which I, I'm going on with what Alex says, I love the shed built. I love the angle grinder, cut up steel, yeah. uh, jigsaw, yeah. 
jigsaw cutting out the sheet of steel. You can't do it with hard knobs now. I've got to use plasma cutters, mm. but they're all handheld plasma cutters. Um, and all these shed builds, I love the shed builds. I love the simplicity of some of these machines. Get a file out to it. Get an angle grinder out to it. Um, we all like this. I've got a CNC mill at home, um, but I don't cut anything for Dan Sonke on it because I'll whilst they look pretty, <laughs> what's the point? Yeah. To, to Can me, I just... What's the point? Same. I was just going to say to angle grinders, I think Alex, what, you know, Groundhog, wasn't that just four angle grinders with some tape together somehow? I'm a bit, <laughs> little bit you know. <laughs> yeah, four, four angle it's fantastic. grinders. Fantastic, fantastic, yeah, that's all you need. Into a steel tube in the bottom of the legs. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. I remember seeing it first off, thinking, well, great, great idea, you know. You can use what's around, you can look at what's in your garage and just think, have a new idea. The problem is now, it's so competitive and so destruct destructive, you need a, we need something to let the ideas out again, you know, a, a uh, 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 you know something where you can come along and say oh, I've had this fantastic idea and I just want to run it and not you know be laughed at and I you know because it should never be laughed at if you had a good idea you could develop something and it's not you know not a vertical spinner you need a chance somewhere somehow we're, we're, we're big advocates of the shed build yeah we love yeah, the yeah. shed yeah. Yeah. I, did, I did an event with Roman Robots <clears throat> some years ago and there's a team, team of um, uh, pensioners that is what they were. They come from the local home. Two men with their wives, girlfriends, and they had built this, this machine. It was not competitive, but the reason they built it because they wanted a day out with, and have fun. They, they built this thing in the shed over four or five weeks or whatever it took, and they took it to this event, and they just wanted to fight, have one fight, and then go for a cup of tea, which is what they did. They had a fantastic time. Mm. That's a shed build. Don't knock them. This mm. is what we should be pushing. Um, <clears throat> we really yes. do need to push the engineering and the creative mind. As as um, Sai says, look around your shed, look around in your house. There's things to use in there all the time. Yeah, we we're going to say. Uh, I've seen from. I want to say that we're going to start with a quick fire round of questions in chat. So please do get your questions in in chat. But I wanted to shout out Owen in chat who said, "This is what plastics are great for." Entire robots made with hand tools. So a lot of the featherweights, particularly, and quite a lot of beetles, are built with chopping boards. HDPE is is our favourite material. Yeah. We we swear by HDPE now because that's how you can do stuff with a jigsaw at home really easily and quickly and do a quick bodge. Um, before we get to the chat questions, chat, please chuck your questions in with a quick fire. We just wanted to speak a little bit more about BattleBots. So you mentioned, Mike, you did BattleBots in 2002, mm -hmm. was it? Um, how, how do the rest of you feel about BattleBots? It, would you go compete now? As obviously that's where the televised stuff is at the moment. Alex first, how do you feel about BattleBots? Uh, yeah, I, I love it. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great entertainment show and yeah, they've, they've done a great job in, um, yeah popularizing robot combat again in the US um, really really invigorating it like the, the changes they made with like the fight night formats really really cool um, I can't see myself building a heavyweight um, but I mean I would quite happily be on a team um, to help out but yeah uh, did you ever consider taking firestorm over I don't have Firestorm anymore, sadly. No, back in back back, back in the day. Oh, back in the day, back yeah. in the day. Um, I think it's just something we weren't really aware of at all. Like we didn't really know anything really about BattleBots, at least when I was working on and on Firestorm. Um, yeah. So it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't something we considered. Uh, mm. Cool. How about you, Seren? Are you kind of in the same boat there? Were you kind of aware of BattleBots, but not really aiming to get over there at the time? Would you go now? Um, so I definitely go now. Uh, at the time, you know, I, I, I was a lot younger, and it would be uh, it would have been a lot harder uh, for me to go to BattleBots. Um, um, but uh, d definitely now, I, I'd love to go. But you know, the, the two most recent series series of uh, Robot Wars, I turned up with the robot and bits, um, and and I don't know if you could. Do <laughs> it might be a bit oh, risky uh, shipping something too. over. Eh? <laughs> Pardon? I've seen many. I know many UK teams that ship over a box of parts and then start building a heavyweight. With oh, really? Them, so okay. Then you worry. Uh, well, well, then, then, I, then I've got to go as well. Then. <laughs> 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 How about you, Sai? Battlebots? Yeah. Would you take the uh, well, games? Right. Yeah. In the old days, I mean, I, I was in the early days of Road Wars. I had a small team, but after the series two and series three, four, I was on my own, and so Robot, Robot Wars absorbed every 
every part of my being just trying to get a machine going when you're working on your own you know making electronics and the chassis and making everything i made everything from scratch but now i'd so i would desperately love to be just just would desperately want to go and do um to go over to the states and do their stuff the way they do it you know they've really got a good um good thing going there and they're, they're doing it you know it's 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 nothing much going on here for a moment i hope you know robot wars comes back but you know a bit of battle bots be fantastic but again I'm on, I'm on my own and i just haven't i went over to you know robo games and i pulled a small team together and took b over there and i learned a lot from that and that was almost like my feelers and now i've got a lot of good ideas because i need to learn a bit about what goes on out there and i had a good look around and i made notes and now i've got a good i've got a good plan but I need a team, you know, and I've, it's just me still. And I've put my feelers out for so many times, but the, all the good people, you know, are doing it, are already doing it. You can't, you can't drag them off the team. You know, there's, there's only a limited amount, it seems, of really top builders, you, which you need to get over there and make an impression. You know, it's no good going over there. I wouldn't go over there and just be an also ran. I want, want to put a team together. Maybe I'll talk to Alex. Put a team together. Say, but then it's, it's hard, you know. available, <laughs> you know. There's a, there's a good a team. Robo nerd team. Yeah. A robo yeah, nerd team. Eh? This team right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. Mike, you said you did it back in the day. How would you feel about BattleBots nowadays and how did it compare to Robot Wars back in the day? We were taken out by Surgeon General. Now, Surgeon General was a very, very basic machine. He used a, um, a nine inch angle grinder gearbox to drive his two discs, or he'd drive his disc. <coughs> The machines now are all CNC, CAD built, perf perfect machines. And for, to me, it's taken the, um, the camaraderie, the sport way. I mean, we, were, we went out in 2002, um, Gareth Dean and myself went out there. And so we took ours as, as luggage. Yeah. If anybody wants to know how that was done, it was quite easy. <laughs> um, and you can still do it now. But our room was the party room, so all the American teams in, in our hotel rooms come in, the bath are filled with cold water, chuck your beer in there, that's your, that's your fridge. And none of that exists anymore. Hmm. So would I do BattleBots now? No. Okay, interesting. Because what I, <clears throat> what I enjoyed, what I went for, no longer exists. Yeah. It's right, not just a competition. The... We do all the live events, it's all fun and social. And it yeah. doesn't exist anymore. It's quite, it's, it's, it's like the F1 of robot combat now, isn't it? I think that's how people describe yeah. it. Yeah. But we're in the quick fire round now because we've only got two, like two minutes, minutes left of the panel. So uh, we've got a great question here from Jimmy. What was the most valuable lesson you learned from fighting robots in, in a very brief In one seconds, sentence. In one sentence. Over to Alex. Most valuable uh, lesson. I know nothing. Amazing. Love it. Mike? Uh, have a better link retaining system. Cost <laughs> four fights. Amazing. Saran? Uh, make sure you've got some slack in your eyes, otherwise something's going to move and pull the eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> Scythe? Learn to be poor. <laughs> Robots make you poor. No, they do, yeah. Excellent. Uh, Next question, go for it. Taylor the Toaster asks, whatever happened to the Oblivion robots, Saran? Uh, well, there, there were two. Yeah. Um, but, um, but, yeah, they both were recycled. Basically. Recycled into Supernova, I guess. R.I.P. Yeah. Oblivion and Oblivion. Uh, Kade Bedolls asks, any changes you'd make to Robot Wars if it came back on TV? Sigh. One sentence. Any one changes? Sentence. Changes. What would you change in one sentence? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, wow. Seren? Um... Uh, uh, different house robots. Different house... Oh, exciting. Mix Mike? Up. No, I'd keep it the same, but <clears throat> I'd put probably a cost limitation on some of these machines. I like it. Force the shed builds back in. Nice. Shed meta. <laughs> Let's go. Alex? Cool. Uh, stick it on BBC One on a Friday night. Yeah. There we that, go. That, Get that, our news back. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. That, that is the perfect place to end our chat. Thank you Thank all you. so much for coming on for this manic 45 minutes <laughs> of, of chat it's been fantastic to speak to you all yeah thank you for your time and we could be talking for hours with you guys you're all amazing people and we love your robots so. you are amazing yeah. uh, thanks, stick you. Around. thanks guys and we'll see we'll see you in a bit much love everyone thanks, thanks, up thanks chaps bye. Bye. bye bye and right there we go so that was the live panel we hope you've enjoyed it
Wow, yes. doing. So, whoa, whoa, I am all <laughs> over the place. Wow. Okay, coming up now, we have uh, Vote Saxon's interview with the Deer Tour team.